Welcome to the Ultimate Entertainment Solutions Show, presented by Ultimate Entertainment Solutions. The show where we dive deep into popular topics, equipment, and emerging technologies and trends. Hope you're ready. DJ Spin It. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is DJ Ultimate, a.k.a. DJ Chris, and I would like to welcome you to my podcast. Uh, This is episode one, uh, very first one. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, The reason for this podcast today is just kind of giving you a brief overview about what I'm going to be talking about, discussing on this podcast uh, throughout the next course of several weeks and uh you know you guys give me some topics and we'll kind of go over them and uh we'll just keep rocking from there um so who am i again like i said my name is dj ultimate aka dj chris uh when i go to more formal events i go by dj chris i don't go by dj ultimate unless i'm in the club vibe or you know private party like backyard you know uh you know just more or less uh chill vibe stuff like that so i go by dj chris and more of my um, upscale uh, events. But um, I'm the owner of Ultimate Entertainment Solutions out of Goldsboro, North Carolina. Uh, I have been doing this for seven years now professionally, uh, but I have been DJing since 2008, 2009, um, originally from Texas. So uh, if you're from Texas, shout out if you're from Texas. Uh, I'll get into what brought me out here to North Carolina here in a little bit. Uh, but we won't get into that just yet. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm a mobile DJ. Um, I don't have any residency residencies, uh, at any club or anything like that. Uh, I do DJ, uh, pretty much any event, uh, weddings, uh, family reunions, uh, you name it. I DJ it, uh, or I have DJed before I've DJed overseas um foreign countries um here in the U- u.s of course uh so yeah uh resume is pretty long um i'm not re- very very popular because uh i don't do a lot of social media uh that is probably my biggest weakness is social media i absolutely hate social media <laughs> uh and it's kind of weird because you know you're like dude you're doing a podcast so how do you hate social media well that's one of the things that um you know i have set up to do to kind of get out of my bubble is you know do a podcast and do some more things to engage on social media to kind of get my name out there you know and to uh to kind of grow as a company um so yeah Uh, I'm a single ops, not a multi ops. Um, It's just me. I do have individuals that come out and help out uh, when I need it. So if I do need additional DJ or something like that, I do have people that I do call upon if I need them. Um, I do refer out DJs if I can't do it. Uh, I'm not a hoarder. So uh, I do have a network of DJs that that I, you know, if we get along and I can't do it, I don't just pass the gig off to, to the abyss of nowhere. Uh, I do look out for fellow DJs. Uh, this is a big community, and I, I am so, 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 so big on uh, helping out other DJs. So, uh, you know, I, I encourage each and every one of you to do the same, uh, especially like individual other DJs that you find that you can trust. Uh, one, learn from them, pick their brain, uh, respect them <laughs> more, more, you know, bigger uh, type of respect them. Uh, don't use and abuse them. Uh, don't just, you know, become friends or allies with them because you think they can do something for you, but, uh, forge a real friendship with them. Uh, you know, don't just take from them, give them also, uh, whenever you can. Um, and then, you know, uh, if you have the ability to pass on events and stuff, help each other out. Uh, I'm a big component of that is, is helping out each other. So, uh, I do do that. Um, so what brought me here to North Carolina? Um, and I have to put this out for legality purposes. Um, the DOD and the uh, Air Force, they do not endorse this in any uh, way, form or fashion. But I am a active duty mil- uh, military member of the United States Air Force. Uh, so that's what brought me out here. Uh, I've been serving in the Air Force for 12 years now. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's why I'm, I'm here. Uh, but I do this on the side as a, a part time um, you know, I'm slowly 
building this up to where it's going to be my full time once I retire or if I just decide to to part ways with the military at some point. Uh, this will be my full time employment. Uh, but until then, uh, it, it is a, a side uh, uh, gig. So uh, I do make good money doing this uh, and I enjoy doing this. It's a lot of work, but I do enjoy doing it. Um, so, yeah. Um, how did I start DJing? So I've always had a love for music. Um, I, I just, I don't know. You know, I've always listened to music and, uh, you know, anytime I was stressed out or whatever, I was always listening to music and and uh, music was just kind of my relax point. Uh, you know, if I was in a bad mood, I could listen to music or I could relate to some sort of music or something that was going on in music. I could relate to it. Uh, once I got into high school, you know, I would always make some mixtapes and stuff for friends and whatnot and just give them away. Uh once I got out of high school, uh, I got into computers. I kind of let music go a little bit, just a little bit, but I still constantly, you know, uh, downloaded music and uh, kept up with music. And I, you know, I had some kind of tie with music. I always had music going. I always had the the car stereos and and everything. So I always loved music. Um, and then um, I, I joined a bike club. And I, I I believe we put on an event and I didn't even know that one of my homeboys in the bike club DJ until the event. Uh, we got to the event and, uh, you know, he was setting up his 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 uh, his equipment and uh, he started DJing. And I was memorized by what he was doing. And um, so I walked up to him during the event. And I was like, hey, man, you mind if I just kind of watch and see what you're doing? You know, he's like, yeah, cool, dude. Do what you do. I was like, all right. So I was just, you know, completely caught in a, tr in, a in a state of like um, shock, like on what he was doing. Uh, he had the, the turntables and everything. And so I was, you know, I was from that moment on, I was like, yo, this is what I want to do. Like, yo, this is like legit. Like, I want to do this. So I asked him like, hey, you know, uh, would you would you mind teaching me this at some point? And he was like, Absolutely. Uh, so we could continue to go to different events. And, uh, I remember seeing, uh, a female DJ. Uh, I don't remember her name, but this is the first time I ever seen somebody actually scratch live. Uh, I've always saw it on TV, you know, and, and everything, but I actually, this is the first time I actually like experienced it live. And I just remember how hype I was. I was like, yo, I mean, of course, I've been to the clubs and everything, but clubs, you know, typically at the clubs I was going to in, in Texas, it ain't really scratch. They were just, you know, it was just music, you know, we dancing and whatnot. And then, you know, fights break out and all that good stuff. But um, this was, you know, older vibe and older individuals and stuff. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, Literally, she just got up there, started scratching it. And, and I mean, it was just it was dope. Like, you know, the transitions and the way she went about it, the crab scratch and the chirp and everything. I was like, yo, at this time, of course, I didn't know anything about any of that. Um, I just knew she was scratching. That's it. So, um, you know, I approached her and I was like, yo, whatever you did, I want to do that. Uh, but we were in a different, you know, different town, different city. Um, so of course, you know, really wasn't feasible for her to teach me, but I was just like, whatever you did, I want to, I want to do that. And, uh, so, you know, she was just saying, you know, practice, 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 get equipment and practice. Uh, at this time I wasn't in the military and I didn't even, military wasn't even, uh, a consideration at the time. So, uh, I got back to the clubhouse and they had like a little Walmart Powell, uh, <laughs> controller <laughs> you know and i thought it was the hottest thing ever so that's what i ever you know first thing i ever started learning on was a walmart power controller and um so i'm learning on it trying to figure it out and uh completely lost like i mean i had no clue on what i was doing um you know so fumbling and bumbling around um the guy that was the DJ at the time, you know, he had to work. Uh, so I would go up there by myself just trying to figure it out. Uh, I would say after a few months, you know, I kind of got a little bit of it, um, but it wasn't good enough to the point where I could actually do anything with it. And um, 
uh, I met another guy within the club and he, he kind of did it, uh, you know, on the side as well. So I went out to a party with him as well. And, uh, he was, he was pretty decent with it as well. Uh, so he started teaching me, um, you know, kind of some ins and outs and everything about it. So this was my first official unofficial gig because, uh, we had another event and he was like, Hey man, I'm going to call you up there. This is your time to kind of to give it a go. And I was like, yeah, 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 let's do it. So, uh, I remember, uh, going to the, you know, event and, um, you know, he's calling my name up there and, um, he's like, uh, you know, he's calling my club name and, uh, he's like, yo, where you at? Where you at? And I froze <laughs> and, uh, I just, I me, I was like, yo, I wasn't ready. And, uh, so I ducked out, like I didn't hear him calling me and I was just like, yo, I can't do it. <laughs> so I bounced out. Uh, so that was my first event. Um, yeah, I, 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 I yeah, I ducked out on it. So, uh, funny story on that, but yep. Um, but yeah, uh, DJN is, I mean, I've been factuated with it for a while now, so, um, it's, it's crazy. Um, reason why I started this company, um, it's kind of intricate and complicated. Um, at the time I had a friend and I wanted to help. He was in a, he was in a situation I wanted to help. And, uh, you know, they DJed as well. So, you know, I thought, well, what would be the easiest way to make some extra income? You know, what's the fastest, easiest way? And, um, to me, I was like, you know what, DJing, I was like, that's the easiest way to do it. I was like, it's a no brainer. We know how to DJ. People want DJs. Parties are always every weekend. I said, so, I mean, this is the easiest way to get money. I was like, so, you know, let, you know, I'll put up the money and we'll start DJing and, and, uh, you know, help this individual out to try to get out this situation. Uh, so it wasn't necessarily about me. Uh, or anything like that. It was, I, I wanted to help somebody out. And, um, since then, you know, this company has, has, has grown, uh, and manifested into other things. Uh, and I'm, I'm super proud of where it, it has gone. Um, it's grown beyond what I ever envisioned it to. Um, you know, I was just hoping, uh, when I first started that, you know, I got an event, and then I was hoping that I could get two events. I was hoping I'd get three events. Then I was hoping that maybe I could get, you know, an event a, a month, uh, you know, two a month. And now I'm, I'm at the point where I'm like, yo, I, I'm, I'm completely full this month, next month, the month after this. And I'm, I'm referring out. I'm like, hey, I can't take it. Can you take it? Can you, you know? So um, it, I have succeeded um, my expectations. Um, now, granted, I can constantly raise the bar of ex of expectations. Uh, never settle uh, for what you've always accomplished. Um, that's my 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 motto. Uh, never settle for what you have accomplished. Um, I will say there's been a lot of struggles, uh, a lot of uh, things that I learned the hard way. Um, I've had to learn by trial and error, which a lot of us do. Uh, sometimes that's the best way to learn. Sometimes maybe not so much, especially if you're, uh, if somebody's entrusting you with their big day, uh, like a wedding or something, I would definitely say you don't necessarily want to learn by trial and error on that. Uh, now if it's just, uh, you know, you're doing something for a friend at a backyard, uh, you know, all right. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, you could, you could, you could kind of play around with those. Uh, but for weddings or, or something like that, something that somebody's paying you for, uh, I don't really like to do trial and error on those. Uh, I like to go in confidently knowing that what I'm doing is going to work. Um, so I've done a lot of research with YouTube. Uh, there are some individuals that I follow and I, and I, and I'm going to give you these individuals because, um, they give you a lot of valuable information. Um, one of them being DJ Rick Webb, uh, Eric Messenger, uh, DJ Nick Spinelli, um, Cleveland Terry. Um, who else we got? DJ J Book. So 
those individuals on if you look them up on YouTube, I mean, you're going to get some great information, some great uh, tools from those information uh, from those individuals. Uh, you also got DJ Hoopig. He's kind of moved out of DJing and he's going into more of, um, you know, like installations and rigging and stuff like that. But if you if you look at some of his older uh, videos, you'll find some very good information uh that he has posted on youtube that you can kind of go back and look at uh and and kind of you know learn and, and get some uh tips and tools to put in your bag and your arsenal for future uh events so definitely look those individuals up <coughs> excuse me uh you won't be you won't be uh um you won't be ashamed uh jason jenna is another one he's with uh you know he's up there with uh nick spinelli uh dj bar um out of philly uh another good uh person to to go uh youtube and 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 look up uh i mean these dudes when i tell you those those guys that i just named i mean man um you go look at the equipment and what they're doing it, it, it it's amazing um i don't i don't have as much as equipment i have a lot of equipment uh, but I just don't have as much equipment as those guys. Uh, here in the near future, I hope to have as much equipment as the, as they have. Um, uh, I'm not crazy far off, but um, I just don't have as much equipment as they do. Um, but again, I don't do this um, full time. I know Rick Webb is a part timer as well, uh, but the other ones are full time, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, also, Eric Mes Messenger and uh, Rick Webb, they have a uh, podcast. If you, you know, tune in, check it out. Um, DJ J Book also has a podcast. I would highly uh, suggest you check his out. And uh, Nick Spinelli also has one. So um, definitely go check those guys out. Um, man, like I said, I've learned so much from those guys. Um, I can't thank them enough. Um, my One of my next goals to start going to some of those, these conferences. And uh, I hope to meet these individuals. Um, I actually got in, invited to one of the, to the NAM conferences, uh, by one of the vendors. Uh, I opened up for a few of the, uh, some comedy, um, comedians. And, um, one of the sound engineers was an actual vendor there. Um, and love what I did love how you know i met met the uh the uh comedians i would say i met them for 15 minutes they gave me what they wanted and i knocked it out of the park completely knocked it out of the park and then we went to a party afterwards after that um so they loved it uh, uh the comedians actually stayed and uh for the you know i want to say they stayed 30 minutes into the party after that after and i mean they uh, you know, they were talking to me. They said they loved what I did and then how I transitioned into the party and just, you know, they just they overall loved what I did. Um, so when I was talking to the the sound engineer, um, you know, again, he kind of liked what I was doing. Um, and, you know, he we exchanged information and he invited me to um, uh, one of the NAM conventions. Well, unfortunately, uh I deployed and I couldn't make it. So um, I did miss that opportunity. Um, so um, I haven't made one yet, uh, but I, here in the near future, I do hope to make one of those soon. Um, so if you haven't made one of those, I would say definitely put that on your to-do list because uh, it's on mine. Uh, we'll briefly kind of talk about some of my equipment. Um, and then we can go into this later on in, in future podcasts, um, uh, and we can talk about other equipment. Um, and then if you, if I get a lot of subscribers to this and you guys like this and, uh, we can start probably going live and then I can get some live interaction and then, you know, we can start talking, doing some things live, like live Q and A and stuff like that. If I get a lot of subscribers. So, um, for my everyday, um, and if you see me looking down, that's cause I'm looking at notes. So for my everyday uh, controller, I use a Pioneer DDJ 1000 SRT. Uh, that's my pretty much my go-to right now. Uh, that's the workhorse. I do have a uh, NV Newmark NV2 
that I use as a backup and as a secondary. So if I need to run two systems, so if I need a system in one spot and I need another one in another spot, then that NV is going to be my secondary one. Um, <clears throat> I have some QSC uh, K12.2s. Uh, uh, I also have uh, the JBL 828P uh, sub. That's a dual sub. That's a beast of a sub. I mean, I love that thing. That is probably one of my favorite um, uh, speakers. Um, that sub is a beast. Um, I have the JBL 835Ps, the three ways. I have two of those. Um, I have the JBL PRX1s. Eh, and we'll get into those later. So I'm, eh, eh. They're okay. Uh, I actually just had to send one in uh, for a warranty. I got it back and I'm actually, the crazy thing is after I sent it in for warranty, it actually seems to work better than when I got it from the store. So uh, more to come on that, actually. More to come. Um, I'm going to, yeah, more to come. Uh, I actually just used one that uh, last week for Sweet 16 and that thing, that thing was actually uh, thumping. So uh, more to come. Um, I have, uh, the Mackie, uh, thump go. I use that as my battery powered, uh, uh, speaker of choice. I didn't want to go with the Maui go. Um, I, I didn't want to go with the Bose. I wanted something a little bit price, uh, you know, friendly. Um, and I'm just going to be honest. Uh, I didn't want to spend the money. Um, <clears throat> so, and that's just because of the demographics where I'm at. Uh, I do have a lot of, I do kind of venture up into the Raleigh area and, and I have been up into the Charlotte and Fayetteville, but again, uh, you know, my demographics, I just did not see, um, the, the, the value in spending that extra, uh, for the Maui go and stuff. So the Mackie thumps, I've used it, that, that go I've used it, uh, I want to say six or seven times now. And I mean, it sound it sound pretty good. So, uh, I have not been let down yet. Um, uh, but again, you know, uh, teach your own. Um, uh, so I, so far I've been, I've been okay with it. I've actually thought about purchasing another one. Um, so we'll see. So these was, this is kind of what I started out with when I first got into the game, uh, several years ago. Uh, I have the, uh, Mackie thump 1850 subs, um, the SRMs, I don't, I kept them because they were cheap. Um, and then I don't mind. So when I have something, you know, I just, I just keep them. Um, I'm probably going to upgrade those to the QSCs, to be honest with you. Um, I just have not yet. Um, uh, so that, that I just keep them for now. Um, those those will probably get uh, upgraded here shortly, but I don't <clears throat> I don't really love them. I don't really hate them, but they're OK. Uh, if you were to ask me what I do it over, I would say no. I would probably get the EVs as much as I hate to say it. I would get the EVs, um, the EVs for the price. I think <clears throat> I think they're a little bit of better speaker. They hit a little bit harder. And they hit a little bit, they have a little bit lower uh, frequency response than the Mackies. So I probably would go with EVs over these SRMs. But, <clears throat> you know, you live and you learn. Um, What else do I have? I have, uh, as far as lighting, I have some AG, ADJ uh, Focus Spot 4s. I have several of those. Um. I use some um, Wash Effect twos. Yes, I do use the Gig Bar too. Um, you know, you say what you want about it. Um, I do have events where it is more practical to use that. So um, again, I'm all about practical uh, use. Uh, you know, if I have an event that's only paying me eight hundred dollars and it's a quick setup and get out, then uh, I don't. If I don't have time to set up you know, uh, some big lighting than the gig bar to it is, um, you know, so it is what it is. Um, I'm not ashamed to say it. The gig bar two is, is, it, you know, it has its, it, it has its applications. I will say that. Uh, and you know, 
I run, again, we can get into this later in future podcasts. I have packages. So my higher end packages does not offer the gig bar. It does it just doesn't have it. It has the gobos. Uh, and then if you don't like the Derby light, even in the lower end packages, that's what the wash effects are for. You can swap it out. So, uh, you know, there are some there are some things where we can, you know, swap out. So um, for my lighting, I use Show Express. Um, been looking at sound uh, switch. Don't know if I'm going to make the switch yet. Uh, I've, I've already invested so much in Show Express. So we'll see. Um, <clears throat> I use ADJ Wi Flies uh, for my transmitters and my receivers because I have the tri wedges for my uplights, the battery powered tri wedges. Um, I have 20 of those. So they don't have the the transmitter receivers in them. So I have to use the the Wi Flies, uh, you know, a separate uh, standalone transmitter, uh, which it does make a bit of a pain when you have to charge them up and everything. But uh, those Wi Flies, you know, I can use them on anything. So when I have spotlights and stuff, I, I hook them up to my spotlight, which I have a spot to focus. Um, and then of course I, I hook them up to basically whatever else. Um, I also hook them up to my cold sparks that I have. I have cold sparks. So, you know, you know, I have, um, a, a laptop that I control all of this with. So, you know, uh, everything that I can control wirelessly through show express, I DMX, you know, patch it in and I control wirelessly. So that's why I say it is a pain to, to make sure everything is, is, um, charged up because you know you have to charge you know every every light fixture that's battery powered and then you have to charge your your uh trans you know your um receivers and your transmitters and then you have to plug them up but you know it saves time so when you get to the event um i do have a ceremony rig that we can get into um it's very simple it just has like a small mixer in it and it has lapels and uh microphones uh, nothing special. Um, uh, I do have an amp rack that I use for, um, reception. So that one, you know, again, it has microphones. Uh, I do use, <laughs> I do, <laughs> I went a little bit overkill on the mixer. So I have the personas, um, the 32 studio live, uh, a little bit overkill, uh, that I use my iPad to control wirelessly. I have a router that, that I can use wirelessly so I can be anywhere in the room and I can control the volume. Um, I also have a dedicated line for the videographer. Um, so, and then I have a delay unit on it. Uh, I also have, um, I don't really like them. Um, but I have the alto, um, the alto, um, what are they? the speaker? Um, oh, what are those things? Um, where you transmit sound, um, just those, the sound, the wireless, the wireless, uh, transmitter for sound. I have the alto, um, the alto stealth. I forgot what the actual name are, but I've only used that three times. And, uh, I had a lot of dropout on it one time and it made me very uneasy. So I had to actually connect uh, XLR to it to move it out of the rack and put it above the crowd. So the, you know, interference and ever since then, I just didn't like it. So uh, I've only used it once. And that was, you know, that was only, you know, that one time that I had to use it because I had to transmit sound uh, to a different room and, and I didn't want to run cable. So, uh, but it did work once I got the interference out of there. So um, yeah, uh, I do have a traditional photo booth. Uh, I have a 360 booth. Like I you heard me earlier say, uh, I have the co sparks. Um, what else do I have? I have the, the Embus, uh, low land fog machine. Um, yeah. So, um, I mean, that's pretty much what I do. Uh, I also do uh, monograms. Um, so uh, I, I did do the animated. Um, that's kind of falling off here lately. Uh, you guys let me know if that if you guys still get a lot of animated. Uh, I've just been getting a lot of static. 
uh, monograms, just your typical regular static. Um, yeah, I don't get a lot of uh, um, the the animated. So let me know if you get a lot of those. Um, I just get a static. But anyway, moving on. So what do we? What are what do you, what do you, you know? What is expect out of this podcast? Uh, mainly, we're just going to talk about a little bit of emerging uh, information. Uh, what's what's trends in the, in this in this industry? Uh, you know, new equipment. Um, you know, I'm going to try to look at new equipment that's coming out, especially if I have my hands on it. Uh, I definitely want to give you my opinion. I don't want to say a review because I hate reviews. Uh, I've seen reviews on stuff and it's just not what what the review said. Uh, so I hate reviews. I'm just going to give you my opinion. Uh, and then I'm going to tell you to please go out and try it. Uh, because, you know, the last thing I want to do is to tell you something is 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 five star and then you get it. And then because I have an understanding of how to work it or do something or manipulate it and then you get it and maybe it doesn't do the same thing for you. Uh, so I'm just going to give you my opinion. I am going to try to give you the ins and out of it. So if I have to manipulate it to do something, I definitely want to tell you that. Um, because I, I, I just, it was just like a, a arm for my, um, uh, for my, uh, uh, my, uh, flight case for my controller. I had to manipulate it to get it to work. Right. And when I did the review from the individual that I, I, I watched, you know, that recommended, I didn't really get that from that. Um, but anyway, needless to say, um, I just, you know. I'm going to give you my opinion on that. <clears throat> I'm going to give you the marketing strategies that I know. Uh, again, like I told you, my biggest pet peeve and my my weakest, well, my pet peeve, but my biggest, um, my weakest point is social media. I know that's my weakest point and I know what I need to do on social media. I just lack the interest to do it. Um, I have probably eight cameras <laughs> laying around. Uh, I just had an event this past weekend and I had the camera and I had the tripod and I literally asked my assistant, I said, man, you think we should take the camera in and, try and put it, put the cop tripod on? He's like, yeah, we need to. I was like, all right. And I literally closed my car, my truck and the trailer and I just left it in there. I was like, ah, I'll come back for it. And I never went back for it. Um, and that's, that is, that is detrimental. I, I'm going to tell you. Don't do what I do. That is detrimental to your company. You absolutely need content. You 100% need content to go along. I don't care how many, how much, um, you know, uh, by word of mouth review, you still need the content to go with it. Um, if I had the content, I can't tell you where I would be right now. And I know that. I, I, I mean, I know that. One reason why I'm not too concerned with it right now is, again, like I said, because of my current situation of being active duty military, um, I'm pretty much maxed out onto what I can take right now. <clears throat> so um, I'm not really concerned uh, with 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 taking on too much more. Um, but, you know, in the future, I'm going to need that content, especially if I'm going to want to be consider, you know, going full time later on in life. So uh, that is something that I need to start looking on to set myself up for later on in life, uh, because it's it's it, if when I need it and I don't have it, it's too late. I need to go ahead and have it now. You, if you get what I'm saying. Um, <clears throat> and then marketing strategies also goes into like branding. Um, you know, and again, a lot of this information you can find with other individuals. It's not just me. Uh, a lot of times what I do is I have an idea or I have a concept and, you know, I'll put it on paper, pen, and I, or I tell, <laughs> be careful telling, telling others, unless you know that they're a true friend or family. <clears throat> not to say like, you're not, in, again, you're not in competition with anybody. You're in competition with yourself, right? I don't care what Joe Blow or who anybody else does. I don't care. I don't care if somebody takes my idea necessarily, but I want to be able to do my concept first. And then you can come do my concept if you get what I'm saying. I want to be able to do it first. And then you can, if you want to do it after I do it, I don't care. Do it. Be my guest. I'll teach you how to do it. I don't care. Uh, but I want to do it first, if that makes sense. Not to say because I was the first to do it, 
but because it was my concept and I don't want anybody to get that misconstrued as me doing your concept. I want that to be, no, that was my original concept. Now, if they want to do my concept, then go for it. I don't care. I hope it works for you if it worked for me. You know, makes sense. Um, hope that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> price and strategies. Again, like I told you, I use a, um, I use a, uh, I have packages. Packages don't work for everybody. Some companies hate packaging. I live by packaging. Since I went to packaging, I mean, it has been easy, easy. You know, I send out my pack price and packaging uh, uh, email and uh, I send up a follow up and, you know, we'll set up a consultation. They already know what 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 to expect when I call them. There is no hassle. And like I tell them, if there's something that they don't like in that package, we can t- kind of talk about maybe, you know, addressing that, you know, and that package does not suit everybody. So if we need to custom tailor a package to them, we can custom tailor a package. But this kind of gives them a baseline of what they're looking at in pricing. So they're not looking at like, well, what am I going to you kind of know what you're going to pay, <laughs> you know. So if you just want me for a DJ for a reception. Well, you know, you kind of already know what you're going to pay, you know, because my package that my very bottom package is DJ for reception. Doesn't have ceremony or nothing, just just reception. And they're like, well, I don't need the lights. I'm like, well, the lights is just kind of thrown in there. It's a gig bar. It's like I don't the lights don't cost you anything. It's a gig bar. I put it on a pole and I plug it up and that's it. I don't do any program with it. Um, it, (laughs) So you're not saving anything if you take it off. Uh, now, when you go to your higher end packages and you see, you know, programming and this and that and everything, and that's when you kind of like, OK, th- you know, that's where your pricing and everything starts to jump. So um, we're going to be bringing in uh, guests. Uh, I'm going to be talking uh, to some uh, vendors, different vendors, not just DJs. I've already been talking to some day of coordinators, uh, some wedding planners. Um, I've been talking to vendors, uh, venue vendors, um, DJs. Uh, So just different vendors that make up this industry um, that you you will benefit from. Because guess what? If I brought in a, a, a venue owner and I just asked them and talked to them and, uh, you know, pick their brain about what they see or what they want out of a DJ, you know, that gives you a better insight of what you should be doing when you go to these venues. Uh, It was funny because I actually ran across one of uh, Nick Spinelli's um, videos, but this was, this is now granted, this was a year ago. Uh, It's just, Oh, it just finally came up on YouTube when I was just searching YouTube for something else. Um, And he said that um, he was at a crossroad. A client wanted him to normalize the wedding as much as possible right as COVID opened up, and he agreed to that. But the venue wanted him to continue with the strict guidelines. So in my contract, I tell all my clients, and this is even pre-COVID, this is before COVID, I have to adhere to any laws or rules and regulations of the state, the county, the city, and the venue period that's period because it is their house you're not going to let somebody come in your house right you're not going to let somebody come in your house if you say hey don't wear shoes on my carpet and they're going to be like well i'm your guest i'm going to wear shoes no this is my house i pay the bills here don't wear shoes on my carpet I mean, that's just that. Right. And this is not a knock on anybody. I've just, you know, uh, you know, and he said he just didn't think of it that way. And then since since then, he has changed it. And, you know, he tells his clients that, you know, he has to adhere to the to the venue. Um, And only reason why my my logic was like that is, again, uh, military. (laughs) If you've ever served in the military, you you know, you got a CYA. cover your own ass so um you know you you 
you kind of have to play by the rules of whoever house is in, unfortunately. And uh, it's, an, you know, some clients get upset uh, and it's just something it's just something you got to do. Um, I've had clients who wants to do the cold sparks of the dance in the clouds. And I'm like, hey, absolutely. Now, here's the thing. I have to get it approved by the uh, the venue first. And they're like, well, but I'm booking. I was like, right. But what I'm saying is before you book that, let me get that cleared. Because if the venue says no, I can't do it. I don't care if you book it or not. I cannot do it. I'm not going to go into their their place of business and their rule is I can't set it off and set it off. Right. Because my thing is you're one person, you're one client that I DJ here for. Right. They do this every day or every weekend. I want to come back here and DJ. You know, I want to continue to come back here. Now, if they have some craziness, <clears throat> you know, I keep seeing these decibel uh, ratings and stuff where you're like literally at like, you know, talking volume and something like that, something very like crazy or annoying. Maybe I probably won't take that event. But something that's very doable, you know, uh, I've had events where they said absolutely no cold sparks, absolutely no dancing on the cloud. This is a, a historic building and we don't we don't want to chance it. You know, um, I, I will plead my case one time. And if they say absolutely not, hey, absolutely. I understand. I thank you for listening to me. I will let the client know. Have a great day. And I go to the client. So that's my two cents on it. Um, <clears throat> again, um, let me know what you think in the comments. You know, just curious. Um, pro tips. Um, I mean, I know you guys get pro tips. Uh, I'm kind of like DJ J book, uh, book. Um, I don't really want to do the speaker comparison. Like you said, I, I kind of hate the speaker comparison. Um, again, it's a lot of times speaker comparison is all about matter of opinion. Um, there are some speakers that just there's just no comparison i mean that speaker is horrible um and then kind of with microphones too um you know um so i i probably will steer away from speaker comparison uh microphone comparison um i will say i am not the best when it comes to microphone like ear uh sound wise i can tell you what sound what when i hear what sounds good to me but professionally, if you, I'm not that that person like a sound engineer, um, so I don't want to steer you wrong. Um, I will, I I will give you my personal opinion on some of the mics that I've had, and I'll tell you what I thought of them. Uh, but I'm gonna put a disclaimer and tell you don't use this as a guide to buying mics. How about that? Our speakers. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. You use your, you, this would be something just, you know, this is just be my personal opinion on what I thought. Uh, I don't, I don't want you to use that as a purchasing guide, I guess. Um, and then insider secrets. I don't really have any, um, I mean, I have a few, but I don't have a lot. I don't have anything like juicy, juicy. Um, maybe one secret, maybe two. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what I can dig up. Uh, hopefully, I can dig up something cool for you guys. Um, you know, uh, maybe somebody tell me some secrets that I can tell you. I don't know. <laughs> if you got a secret, uh, message me, uh, you know, uh, send me an email, info at ultimateentertainmentsolutions.com, and I'll share it to the world. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, we'll see what I can find. Um, but yeah, I just want to have fun on this channel. Uh, I don't want it to be like crazy, like, you know, uh, I don't want to be crazy, like boring. I just want to have fun, have a good time, have a space where you can learn, you know, uh, and, and just get something out of, um, uh, but yeah, um, I hope that you guys come back and I hope you had a good time today. Uh, again, um, you know, this is what, you know, I, I want to do on this channel. Um, and next episode, we'll probably pick a topic and uh, it'll be in the link 
when you see it and then uh, we'll have a guest on the next one so it won't just be me uh babbling on about nonsense <laughs> it'll actually have some 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 content in it this next episode so um if you like it uh definitely please hit the subscribe button uh keep coming back and then um we'll do this regular uh i'll try to pick a date um where it doesn't impede with like football because i'm a big football fan i'm not gonna lie to you so i'm a big football fan uh i might even tell you who's my team maybe i don't know we'll see <laughs> we'll see but anyway i appreciate you coming out and uh tuning in uh again i go by the name of dj ultimate aka dj chris uh y'all have a good one You've been listening to the Ultimate Entertainment Solutions Show. If you enjoyed our show, be sure to tell a friend. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss a show. See you next time.
you've been listening to the Ultimate Entertainment Solutions Show. If you enjoyed our show, be sure to tell a friend. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss a show. See you next time.